Just because Spider-Man No Way Home broke the internet when it dropped its first trailer doesn't mean shooting went off without a hitch. Behind the scenes, it was a constant challenge to get the latest installment in the Spider-Verse wrapped because the cast faced endless struggles, like shooting delays and script rewrites. And for Tom Holland, that was just the start. He also had to wear a thong while filming. Looking the part is just the start. One of the most iconic aspects of any superhero film is definitely the super suit, unless your name is Tom Holland. In fact, he's had trouble with his costume since day one. Initially, it didn't fit, he explained. It was really baggy and saggy, and it looked like a very old, sad Spider-Man. In Homecoming, he picked up another problem. Those eyes didn't actually allow the actor to see anything. But you can't see anything out of it. Mm -hmm. So I was staring in the mirror just looking at like white mist. Does it look good? And everyone's like, yeah, you look great. But I'm like, I can't see anything. So we had to change the eyes. So you'd think that they'd have no wardrobe issues this time around, right? Wrong. Being covered in lycra has its downsides. For starters, if you have an itch, you can't scratch because the material covers your fingers. Also, because his hands were covered, Tom couldn't use his cell phone. I'm straight up head to toe in lycra. I don't even have my, I can't even use my phone. <laughs> yeah. And I'm 23, like I use my phone a lot. Yeah. But that's nothing compared to the fact that he can't really eat or drink in his costume. To do that, the suit's eyes need to come off and a straw is inserted through the hole. It's like something out of a horror movie. And then there's what needs to happen after you eat. Tom recently revealed that he has to plan his bathroom breaks almost an hour in advance because that's how long it takes to remove the suit. To add insult to injury, he's got to wear a very specific kind of undergarment in the ultra-tight suit, a thonk. Thankfully, he got used to the underwear, so it's no longer an issue. But what about how the rest of the cast looks? When it was revealed that Zendaya was cast in the franchise, fans freaked out that MJ would be played by an African-American actress. Honestly, it hasn't gotten much better. She's just gotten used to it. Now she has some pretty good advice for anyone still doubting her ability to portray MJ. When I walk outside in New York right now, I see lots of diversity, and I see the real world, and it's beautiful. And that's what is reflected, so you're just going to have to get over it. It's not just suits and opinions that cause headaches on set. The cast also needs to work hard to look good without the wardrobe. The cast has undergone some epic transformations. As the wearer of skin-tight lycra, Spider-Man can't exactly hide a paunch, so Tom had to hit the gym to get shredded. But while most of us cringe at the idea of training, this guy had an advantage. He's a trained dancer and gymnast. Plus, the actor had a very special workout buddy, Jake Gyllenhaal. The only problem is that in terms of fitness, Jake really outshines Tom. We were in China recently, and uh, Jake asked me if I wanted to go to the gym. And I have to be honest, I didn't want to go. Because what? Jake Gyllenhaal was ripped, right? Those grueling workouts might just be the reason the cast trainer came up with a different and totally unconventional way to get Tom looking buff. There's a good reason that so much work goes into getting the actors physically prepared, because otherwise doing stunts would be a nightmare. And Tom really enjoys doing his own stunts. I do, actually. I do do my own stunts, but there are some stunts that I can't do. And then I have, so I have my stunt double, Greg and Luke, who are incredibly talented. In fact, if Tom had his way, he'd do all his own stunts. But there's a problem. The actor isn't actually allowed to, legally. Which is why he also has a stunt double. Then again, not everyone on the cast had such a hard time looking the part. Jacob Badalin managed to lose a ton of weight for No Way Home, but not without causing some gossip. When the actor first debuted his new body, haters accused him of undergoing weight loss surgery to get slim. However, in reality, it was all down to damn hard work and endless hours of cardio. But while the suits and physiques of the cast are often the first thing we notice, there's another thing the actors had to get right, which required a lot of work. They have to sound the part. We need to talk about that accent. In case you somehow missed this news, Tom Holland is actually British. Sure, he's pretty convincing, but when he's playing Peter Parker, he needs to put on an American accent. Why are you pretending to be British for the interview? No, but I am. I, I am British. It isn't always easy. In Homecoming, Tom accidentally dropped his accent in a scene set in a sandwich shop, and no one noticed until post-production. As a result, the entire thing had to be reworked and cut to not show his face so that he could fix his mistake via voiceover. So when it came to filming No Way Home, the actor was determined not to mess up his accent. He's not alone, because more Brits have joined the franchise. First, there's Benedict Cumberbatch. After perfecting his American accent, he really understands Tom's pain. 
I was just saying backstage how difficult it is to speak in an English accent after doing a whole day's filming of Doctor Strange. Something just happens and I kind of slide into it. But another actor who you may not have realized has a different accent is Alfred Molina, who's returning to reprise his role of Doc Ock. I was 40 when I came over to the stage wow. the first time. Although, if we're honest, the accent was the least of Alfred's worries. After nearly two decades since he was last in the Spider-Verse, a lot has changed. Before, when he played Doc Ock, the actor's robotic arms were actually puppets controlled by a group of specialists. Now, they're all the product of computer graphics. That meant he had to relearn the movements for his characters and required a little bit of imagination on the actor's part. Speaking of imagination, it's time we address those Spider-Man No Way Home rumors that have started doing the rounds, especially since Doc Ock might hold the key to the truth. The rumor mill is causing waves. We all know that Tom Holland wasn't Hollywood's first Spider-Man, but even though he's amassed a massive following, fans of the franchise are still hoping to see a different Spider-Man. Or rather, Spider-Men. Because the internet has demanded to see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, too. And you can't convince the fans that it isn't happening. It doesn't matter that Andrew Garfield has denied the claims a bunch of times, or that Tom Holland has also said it's not happening. So why are fans so adamant they'll see a trio of Spider-Men? Because there's proof. Kind of. Not only do some fans suspect that MJ, who was pictured falling from a scary height in the trailer, will be saved by Andrew Garfield's character to make up for not being able to save Gwen Stacy in his films, but they swear that if you look hard enough, you'll see Garfield's character. Or more accurately, you won't. Because conspiracy theorists are confident that he was deleted from the trailer. This needs some explanation. In the No Way Home trailer, Spider-Man is seen fighting Electro, the Lizard, and Sandman. It's epic and all, but unless you saw the Brazilian version of the trailer, you may have missed a crucial detail, because this version's a few seconds longer than the American trailer. It shows the lizard getting punched in the face by someone we can't see. Now, fans everywhere are convinced that the invisible puncher is actually Toby or Andrew. There's more. Remember I promised that Alfred Molina's character was hiding something? There's no way that Doc Ock, who died the last time we saw him against Spider-Man, would possibly know Peter Parker played by Tom Holland. So when he appears in the trailer with a simple, Hello, Peter. Some viewers suspect he's not actually talking to Tom's character, but to the Peter Parker he knew, played by Tommy Maguire. We'll have to wait to see what the truth is, because we can't rely on Tom Holland to spill the beans anymore. Keep a lid on those spoilers! The thing Tom Holland is best known for outside of playing Spider-Man is spoiling the movies in which he portrays the web slinger. Does Tom Holland spoil movies? Oh! Yes. In the last interview. <laughs> I the biggest spoiler of the movie. <laughs> at one stage, he was so bad at keeping industry secrets that the Marvel bigwigs didn't give him any info about the movies, in case he accidentally revealed it. I read yeah. the I read the electronic press kit. I know, yeah, yeah. I, they don't even give yeah. me that. Oh, really? Yeah. Thankfully, that doesn't seem to be a problem for No Way Home. Tom recently admitted, I had my big pitch meeting with Marvel and Sony about two weeks ago, and I know all the secrets. But I've also done about a thousand interviews, so I know how to not spoil a movie anymore. Which has presented the media with a problem. If Tom won't tell them anything, who will? It's led to a little more pressure on the rest of the cast to keep those juicy secrets. Well, secret! This even includes questions about those rumors surrounding the three Spideys. Do you know anything about that? Uh, no. Um, many people believe Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire will appear as Spider-Man in the multiverse. Do they? Yeah, they wow. do. Have you seen Andrew Garfield recently? And tick, tick, boom. I guess all we can chat about is how excited we are to see this movie, because thanks to COVID, it's a wonder we're getting to see it at all. The pandemic changed everything. Your health and social life weren't the only things affected by the pandemic. Hollywood took a heavy hit. Multiple films were postponed until the safety of casts and crews could be ensured, and Spider-Man No Way Home was no exception. Because the film halted production in the early days, its initial release date was also postponed. That led to a major problem, and we don't mean disappointed audiences. You see, No Way Home was originally supposed to hit cinemas before Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. But Spidey's later release meant that we'd see Benedict Cumberbatch being strange before we see him in Spider-Man. And there was no way that would work in the original No Way Home script. This forced the creatives behind the movie to rewrite the script several times to ensure continuity of the stories. After all, the Doctor has a pretty important role in Peter Parker's next adventure. Tom Holland admitted that in the early days of shooting, the script was changed on a near daily basis making it hard for the cast to memorize lines or see where the story was actually going. The actor told GQ, 
You could ask the director, what happens in Act 3? And his response would be, I'm still trying to figure it out. But the leading man wasn't the only one to struggle in those conditions. Jake Gyllenhaal has been pretty vocal about the added pressure on an already daunting job. It's hard, man. That acting is hard. I mean, it's... it's Physically. I mean... I mean, oh, all of it. I mean, that world is enormous. It gets worse. The pandemic wasn't the only thing that delayed our next fix of Peter Parker. The franchise also ran into some legal troubles. Earlier this year, Marvel filed a lawsuit against the heirs of the original creators of Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and other characters, after plans were announced to block Marvel from using the characters in the future. Can you imagine a world without Spider-Man? Thankfully, you don't have to. Instead, check out our other videos for more info on the cast's love lives. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay awesome!